and welcome back to the learn to code podcast today we're talking about um javascript conditional code um as you may or may not know i've been teaching my wife for a couple of days now um it's been three days actually and i've been teaching her um, basic programming fundamentals using javascript it is her intention to become a web developer in the future um i i went through the ways of um server side programming with java with c c++ and sql so uh i am not a web developer by any means but i i am familiarized with javascript in some sense so i'm using javascript to basically um create this um, environment that facilitates me and her um, the teaching and learning process respectively so let's see so what we're going to be seeing today um, uh, on the podcast is basically um, I'm relating on, on this series of episodes my experiences teaching and even learning um, JavaScript. And today I'm going to be talking about um, conditional code in JavaScript. As many people may or may not know, I do have a YouTube channel, which is named uh, Learn to Code. The link is on the description for this video episode. And if you want, you can actually follow me, uh, subscribe into my YouTube channel and click the notification bell icon if you want um, again i repeat you can see the link to the video for this episode on the uh, podcast description okay uh, so far so good if you're watching this on youtube you can actually see right now that i am uh, using visual studio code for this little project nothing out of the ordinary here um, I may like to call your attention into uh, the couple of files for this project that I actually using. Um, as you may or may not know, uh, JavaScript is already installed in, in most, if not all, machines um, that have uh, an operating system installed on, basically. Um, unless it is a server with only a terminal window, anyway. So. If you don't know JavaScript is a programming language, well, it's a script language because it's interpreted. Um, you don't compile it in, um, and basically it was created to modify websites after loading, obviously. And uh, it's a very um, friendly and easy to get into programming language. I, I actually like it very much. Uh, even though I don't use it that much because I, I am not uh, a web developer by any means. Um, if I need to do some actual web development uh, work, I don't code it myself. I, on, I basically um, build a website using WordPress and, and some uh, theme, and that's basically it. I, I am basically a user of WordPress, not really a, a web developer by any sense. Um, but anyway, if you want to create a basic um, JavaScript program, um, the way that you do it is basically you need to... Uh, uh, in my case, I created a folder inside my documents folder. Uh, I am on Windows 10, by the way, and I created a couple of files, text files. The first one is index.html, um, which basically contains um, a very basic HTML file, which only, uh, which only purpose is to basically um, call the uh, script.js file, um, that I, which is the actual file that I'm working on as a uh, programming. So 
um, you can see the code for the HTML file on my screen. If you are listening to this, um, I encourage you, it's not really that much. I do really encourage you to, to see my previous episodes uh, where I actually uh, describe the making of this, uh, of this uh, very same file. So moving on. Uh, the second file is named script.js. Uh, this is the place where I do all the the exercises and I do all my teaching with my wife. So I'm basically mentoring my wife. Um, for those who don't know, uh, my wife and I uh, met at um, uh, at work um, like uh, four years ago, I believe. So we were working together for a couple of for two years. Then we started dating, like um, a couple of mo uh, two years uh, after that, and and then we got married. So <laughs> the end, I guess. So uh, she actually is a major in computer science. She does have a major in computer science, um, and I was a student in computer science, but I. Uh, how do you Americans call it? Uh, I think it's a, I am a college dropout. Uh, since I didn't uh, finish my studies there, I began working uh, when I was an intern. And uh, I did such a good job, I guess, that uh, the company hired me uh, uh, after a couple of months of being there. So I began uh, getting money and when the money came rolling in and i got work to do um i didn't really care about the school anymore because uh, uh i didn't see the point of finishing school at that point since i was actually earning money um i may i don't really regret not finishing school because uh i was basically <laughs> even though i was basically almost finished anyway uh, the truth is that when the money came rolling in and uh, there was uh, really big money even for for the for the time and considering that I that this was my first uh, official job uh, the truth is that programming uh, gives you a lot of and coding in general if you know how to actually do it properly um, it's really good for for your wallet I guess uh, it does make you a lot of money, actually. Well, anyway, so um, yesterday um, I was teaching. Oh, well, well, uh, let's continue with the story. Well, the thing is that um, I began working, and my wife at the time, I believe, uh, she was uh, working as a software developer. Yet. Um, I learned how to develop software, how to program by my own, uh, by my own interest. And my wife basically was dependent on the teachers at the time. And I, I am, uh, she told me that they were pretty bad, actually. So most of them had never uh, get into a software development project for real, for real. So uh, I guess that was the main issue. So um, the teachers were asking many things that not even themselves knew how to actually accomplish by themselves. So yeah, it was a very uh, bad situation at the time. So so she got scared for um, she got scared away from programming in general. And years passed, and uh, she was basically doing administra uh, administration work. Uh, instead of actual programming and software development and she felt like uh well she told me that she felt like uh programming was not her call because it was very very hard and nobody seems to know how to actually do it properly so i took upon myself to actually teach her the funda the very fundamentals of programming and and basically the, get her the tools to actually build something uh, because she's a very small uh, a small woman um, she's not a stupid by any means and she actually can accomplish much uh, 
However, it doesn't matter how really smart you are. If you don't know how to do something, uh, it, it's not going to help you how, much, how, how smart you are, really. So, um, I took upon myself to mentor her and to teach her the ropes of software development so, ca so, the, so that she can actually choose her own way uh, on the craft. So, as you may or may not know, um, software development and coding is not just uh, I want to learn to code. So, and the first uh, question that many people ask is uh, what's the best, quote, end quote, the best uh, programming language out there? And the answer is always that I give and many people give is the same. Well, um, what do you mean by best? And basically, uh, the, well, the real question is what do you want to build? you want to build a video game uh, and for what platform and you want to build a website um, and what is this website going to do and if you want to build a, um, an iphone app or an android app um, so basically the programming language is not the best but uh, the one needed for the task at hand so basically whatever you want to do is going to define or it's going to be decided for you, the programming language that you're going to use is going to be decided for, for you by um, your main objective. Uh, if you are going to be programming a video game, maybe you want to use uh, Unreal Engine and that's a very C++ um, uh, heavy engine. If you want to develop for uh, the iOS um, operated system, that's uh, the iPhone and the iPad. You may like to learn how to program in Swift. Um, you may like to learn how to program in Kotlin if you want to develop for the Android platform and so on. So basically it depends uh, on what do you want to learn. Myself, I made a lot of my money um, developing databases and being basically a glorified <laughs> database administrator. Uh, you know maintenance for uh, for databases and some programming in java and on on objective pascal to manage my databases and automate the process and whatnot boring job yes is not glorified by any means but it 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 generates a lot of money for the amount of effort that i was putting in is is more than enough so my wife uh, don't really find uh, databases that interesting. She's more like a visual person. So she may like to actually see something beautiful after she uh, does the work. So websites seems to be what she actually chose to do. Um, and I'm going to be making an effort to teach her just that. So, okay, it's story time is over, I guess. So, conditional logic in JavaScript. So let's create, um, uh, if I recall, let me see. Okay, if I recall, uh, last day, yesterday, I teach her conditional coding. Um, the basic thing for conditional in JavaScript, um, the basic statement is the if statement. So you are seeing my, you are seeing my screen right now uh, via YouTube. You can actually see that I'm writing some code. Um, I'm just going to ex uh, write down the basic uh, if a statement, um, you're listening to this, the if a statement in JavaScript works like this. You write down the reserved, the reserved keyword if, followed by a space, um, fo followed by an open parenthesis, and after the open parenthesis, you need to uh, write down an expression that either resolves to false or to something else. What that means is that 
I need to write down a condition expression there. If the condition turns out to be false in the end, that means that uh, the next block of code is not going to be executed because the condition is false. And if the condition is, is not false, then you are going to be executing the code. So after the condition expression, you close the parentheses, followed by a space, followed by um, an open curly braces. And then um, with the open curly brace, you are allowed to set a series or um, of expressions or commands in JavaScript to continue your coding. So after that, you can close that by um, a closing curly brace. And that's basically it. It's not um, very complicated. I'm going to write down an alert inside this if statement. My condition expression is quite literally um, a string, a text string called condition. So I'm not even um, getting into uh, Boolean expressions at this time. So after that, uh, my only command inside the if statement is an alert that writes on the screen the, the string, the condition is true. I'm going to end that alert statement with a semicolon. I'm going to save all this. And I'm going to execute. I'm going to open the index.html file. And I can see that um, I'm getting a pop-up message. With the message, the condition is true. So that means that uh, whatever condition I write it inside this if statement, uh, it didn't resolve into false. If, for example, I change, uh, in this case, many people, be, actually many people believe that you need that uh, the condition uh, expression that the boolean expression inside the the if uh, parenthesis needs to be an actual boolean expression but that's uh, very far from the truth uh, the truth is that you don't really need that uh, whatever uh, expression inside the if statement um, that doesn't really need to be a boolean expression uh, for what i gather I guess that as long as the condition it doesn't resolve to something um, to, to false, then you are going to actually get inside the, um, the code block. For example, if instead of, a, of the string condition, I delete that and, and I put an arithmetic um, expression inside, for example, one plus one, and I save that, and I execute again. Then I get in the message, the condition is true again. That means that um, even though this is an, uh, an arithmetic expression inside the condition, that doesn't really um, uh, means that uh, even when I'm not getting a true, uh, a true Boolean expression here, um, that doesn't really matter. As long as, as I am not getting a false inside the condition, I can actually execute the code inside the block. For example, I can uh, uh, use the, the actual true, uh, the true keyword inside the condition of the if, and then um, that's an actual Boolean expression. And if I refresh this, I am getting the same, uh, the condition is true message out there. By, other hand, by the other hand, if I type the false keyword, then I'm not going in, and if I try to execute the, the program again, I'm not getting anything now. So as long as you are not getting a false statement, a false value here inside the condition, um, then you can execute everything inside the block. So, um, uh, right after that, I teach her about the else 
keyword. And if you are seeing this on YouTube, I am writing the else keyword after the if statement and opening a new block. And the else statement basically tells me um, that in the case, even if I'm not yet in uh, executing the, if I don't execute the code before in the first if state, in the first if block, um, in the else statement, whatever whatever other uh, condition meets, uh, in the case, uh, for example, if I want to know, let's make this a little um, more practical. On line number one on my program, I'm going to declare a variable called balance, which is going to be equals to 5,000. And I'm going to use the variable balance inside my if statement. So if a space open parenthesis balance is greater than a thousand. So if balance is greater than a thousand, then the condition is true. If not, I'm going to print an alert with the message the con condition is false. Very simple stuff. I'm going to save this and execute. And I'm getting the condition is true because 5,000 is greater than 1,000. If I change the condition to if balance is greater than 10,000, and I try to execute, then I get the message the condition is false, obviously. Very simple stuff. I teach her right then um, what this actually mean, uh, because I can have nested if statements, which I don't really recommend, um, because uh, at this point, uh, she began having ideas about um, evaluating values, nesting if, uh, and she came with an idea of nesting five ifs, one after the other, and I had to be honest, um, for years I was doing that with if statements, around five years, um, until I get into the habit of um, actually uh, forgetting about uh, nesting if statements one after the other. The first tool to avoid that, uh, because it's a readability nightmare, actually. Uh, you can imagine that nesting more than three if statements one after the other is already confusing. Now imagine 15. So it's an actual nightmare there. And trying to ident something like that, uh, that tends to be... Uh, just unreal in my opinion especially if you're uh, we do have several tools to deal with that the first one is the and and the or operand uh, operators uh, instead of writing down the and keyword uh, we use the double ampersand uh, symbol so this is an operator is the AND operator and allows me to to come to add a second condition to the if statement this is really useful uh, because uh, I may have a situation where I need to ask if let's say that my condition is going to be if the balance is greater than a thousand and less than ten thousand then the condition is true so if I w if it were me like uh, 11 years ago, I may like to create a nested if statement asking for the balance is lesser than 10,000. If tab is true, then I will get the then I will print out the alert. 
the problem with this is that I am getting a, uh, two if statements instead of just one. And in this small example, that's not an issue because I can actually read it clearly. Uh, but in the real world, when you get into a lot of business rules, you are going to be forced to, if you are, if you are used to just nest if one after the other, you're going to find yourself creating uh, around 15 if statements one after the other and modifying that uh, or, or reading, even reading that code is getting uh, annoying with the time. So I would suggest that instead of creating a nested if inside the other, to make this evaluation, I could just uh, refactor this by extracting the, the second condition from the nested if statement and deleting the if statement itself, the nested one, and adding um, an AND operator and evaluate and adding the the the, con the boolean um, expression on the very same if statement. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that I can uh, make a, an if statement that reads if, open parenthesis, balance, if balance is greater than a thousand and balance is less than 10,000, then the condition is true. So um, I'm writing the the nested if conditional inside um, a single if, and by doing this, I'm saving not just a space. I'm making my code more readable. And uh, this can actually grow in a in a very big if statement if I do have 15 different conditions to meet. So in such cases. I will argue that you may like to use uh, some other methods to evaluate your values. For example, uh, you may create functions, and these functions can have simple names that actually um, help you process in everything instead, instead of trying to evaluate all the values in a single if statement or in, or in nested statements. So you are nesting too much state, uh, uh, you're processing too many um, conditions at the same time. You may like to think about your problem again and basically um, uh, try to find out a way that the code is not so bloated. And if you are making your program too bloated with decision making, you are probably uh, going to need to use functions to simplify the 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 evaluation process or even another uh, another conditional uh, conditional call for example the switch statement which is very popular on c style languages for example here i can the switch statement is basically a, um, a logical uh, a logical structure that allows you to evaluate a single value, a single a single value, and make a decision about what to execute, uh, evaluating that value. Uh, this is really useful for for code that um, requires you to make a lot of different uh, of different ways to execute, depending on a single value. Let's make an example here. Uh, the switch statement is um, you begin with writing the word switch and then a space and open parenthesis and i'm going to evaluate the value on the variable balance and next to that i open the curly braces to create a new block and here is where the form begins with the switch statement um, we need to. We need now to create a list of case uh, of case statements, uh, which are basically used to 
uh, redirect the the execution of the code um, according to every single case here. For example, let's write down a case. Instead, um, let's say that the switch balance is going to be evaluated to um, a thousand value. to 2000 i i writing down case statements which are basically lists of values here so i created a case statement for a, for a thousand then a case statement for 2000 and then a case statement for 3000 and these are basically labels which are used by the switch statement to resume execution of the code at certain points, depending of of the value of the balance variable. So, for example, let's say that in the case of a thousand, I'm going to print an alert. Oh wait, no, I'm going to um, yes, I'm going to print an alert, and I'm going to print out a thousand with letters and then i end up with a semicolon for the 2000 i'm going to repeat the process just writing down 2000 as a message and finally 3000 there we go So I'm basically evaluating the the balance variable and depending on the value of the balance variable I'm going to print out a thousand as an alert, two thousand or three thousand. Let's save this and I'm going to change the the value of the of the balance variable to one thousand. So in t so according to this logic I will get the message a thousand in the end. Yet, if I execute, um, I'm going to get the message a thousand. Then I get the message two thousand, and then I get the message three thousand. And why is that? It's executing every single line. Uh, so why is that? Well, this happens because you see, I'm not creating blocks of code here. So instead of the if statement, uh, the difference is that uh, in the case of the if statement. The if statement defines blocks after the condition evaluation. In the case of the switch statement, I'm moving into um, I'm moving into the case line and using the every single case as a label, not really as a not really as a code of block a, a bloat code. So no. So what I need to do if I want to end execution of the case statement is to end every single case statement with a break uh, with a break statement with the break keyword so I'm going to write down the break keyword at the end of every single statement if I save this and execute again I get the message a thousand and nothing else that's because the break keyword um, stops execution of the current block of code and exits the current block of code. That's what it's be. And the current block of code is the one uh, that is being selected at the moment. So this entire block is going to be break and end execution. So the other cases are not going to be executed as before. And that's basically the mechanic of the switch statement and the break uh, and the break statement for that matter. You can actually use the break uh, a statement not just in the switch statement. You can actually use it inside any other block. For example, in my initial, if I do this in inside the initial uh, uh, if statement, even if the balance is greater than a thousand and uh, let's say it's greater than or equals a thousand
Oh, wait. Uh, okay. So, even if the condition is true in the first statement, since the first line on the block of the if statement is a break, then the alert is not going to execute. Let's try that. And no, it's not executed anymore. A thousand. There we go. So I exit the current block and edit an end execution. So you can actually use the break statement in many other places. You don't really need to um, just use it on the switch statement. Uh, Yet the switch statement is the most popular place to use the break statement anyway. So what happens if my value is 5000 and 5000 is not a case inside the switch statement? If I save that and execute, the condition is true. And I'm not getting any other message. Uh, yet what happens if I want to get a message for this? I can create a, a special case, which is the default. I define a default um, case in the sense that um, when no value on the, on the case uh, list is actually used. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, and we're back. Well, the thing is that uh, with the default uh, keyword we can define a case a special case where you can basically uh, define the code that is going to run when no other case on the list is met so I'm going to print out an alert here and it's going to print out the string invalid value and I'm going to end up that with a semicolon. And uh, even when the default is basically, in, my ca in this case, the default case is the last one and doesn't require break because it's the last one, uh, I do like to get into the habit of uh, writing down the break statement, even for, uh, for the default uh, case, because this may in the future become um uh a very um a specific uh case itself so instead of using default i may like to create in the future uh, a case for this one and make this code um, a defined uh case so when that moment gets uh, i get a break statement here anyway so it's just a habit that i got so if i uh, try to run the program again. Yet yeah, the condition is true, and then the message invalid value. So that's basically it for um, for basic conditional programming with JavaScript. Uh, thank you for coming in, and I hope to see you later. I guess. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if you got entertained by that. I don't know. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Jorge Escobar and on YouTube with the name of, the name of my YouTube channel is Learn to Code. I'm getting uh, I give you a link to the to the video and the channel in the description of this of this podcast. Uh, please follow me there, where you can see the video version of these episodes and. If you want, just uh, send me a message on Twitter if you want. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube, on the description of the video, you can get a link to the actual podcast where you can um, subscribe to my podcast using uh, Stitcher, using uh, the Apple Podcast app. Um, uh, I use uh, a podcaster app myself. On Android, I don't remember what's the name uh, of the podcast I have that I actually use for my podcast. But thank you for coming in and see you later, I guess. See you tomorrow. Goodbye.